uh, the next shlav of um, of Avoida. So again, what we've what we've seen so far in this sugya the erev rav is that the completion of a yid to make a neshama whole, there are two components that need to be brought together. In the language of the Arizal, the two components were the head of the neshama and the body of the neshama. The, our, the Rashash came, as we learned last week, the Rashash came and just changed the nomenclature, changed the language a, a tad, and by just that subtle change really gave us a better picture of what we're talking about. Rashash changes it from head of the neshama to body of the neshama, rather from to, to the neshama of the neshama and the guf of the neshama. And by making that slight change, as we saw, we can now more clearly define what we're talking about. By these two parts coming together, we're talking about a Jewish person coming to life. Because a soul and body, the union of soul and body, means chayim. It means chayim. And so now we can have more of a clear understanding of what, the, what, it, what it means to have a, a, a full person. A full person means not just to keep Yiddishkeit, but that Yiddishkeit and the person's existence and spiritual life should be classified as alive. Chayim, to be alive, body and soul unified, which the result is being alive. And we could also more clearly define what the klipa, what the tum of the Erev Rav is. Because the tum of the Erev Rav is, is trying to keep these two parts separate from each other. When we, well, until, we, until we had the definition of Rashash and the Vilna Gun, we didn't know exactly what that meant. But now that the definition of these two parts coming together means life, now we could, under, we could define the force stopping these two things from coming together, which is the impurity of anti-life, anti-life. And that's what the Erev Rav was. That's what we, and that's what the Erev Rav is. That's the tum of the Erev Rav in the soul of something in the neshama that's fighting against ex- serving Hashem and existing in a category that's called life, being alive. That's called being alive. The Erev Rav mm-hmm. is against that. That's what the Erev Rav is about. That's what it's against. <clears throat> And again, this is why this is why we saw that the whole sugar of the Erev Rav began with the sin of Adam Chav and Ganei. That's where, that's where things began to unravel. That's when we first saw this whole sugar of the Erev Rav begin in that point. And the Pagama Bris that took place in the next 130 years, that's all the Erev Rav Inyan. And that's all a, cho- a choice of living a life of Ezidaz Tevara versus the Eitzachai. So it's a choice. Of, of living a non-life existence versus a life existence. That's what the Erev Rav was. Now, we saw as well that as the antidote, as the remedy, as the tikkun for the Erev Rav, and again, let's, let's appreciate this, how, tar, how Yiddishkeit always works. If we, if the, 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 that tomb of the Erev Rav that's fighting against this Indian of being alive, if it can be rectified, then we're not just talking about taking away an obstacle. We're talking about being able to truly, truly live and truly be alive. That's what we're talking about. And so we saw that the tzaddik that is that that, that was brought to the world really to to remove this obstacle, or in other words, introduce the Jewish people to not just avoid this Hashem, but to avoid this Hashem in a bechina of Chaim. That was the that was my shabbat. That's Nishmas Moshe. And we saw that Nishmas Moshe, in order to do this, comes down in five different incarnations. Right? That's what we saw. Moshe, Shemar Chai, Darizal, Baal Shem, Rabbi Nachman, five incarnations of Moshe Rabbeinu, all for one singular purpose, which is not just to give us Torah, that, that Moshe Rabbeinu did the first time, but to bring down Torah in a way that it can result and be experienced as a Tars Chaim, as the Eitz Chaim Nilam Achzikim Ba. A, 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 an Avadis Hashem that's classified as an Avadis Hashem of life. That's what that's that's basically what we saw. Now, to just show the connection, that we're not just like making this up. You know, the connection between. In, in other words, now that we have that, in, now we can sort of make another formula out of out of what we've talking about. What we can say is as follows is that the air of Rav is anti-life. And if the solution, if the neshama that's there to bring life is Moshe, Rav Shemin, Ari, Baal Shem, Rav Yenachim, and the one commonality between all those five incarnations is what? It's Sight, it's Premius Atar. That's what each one of those incarnations is about. It's not just Tyra that Moshe Vedu begins, but it's a, but it's a Tyra that's, a, that, that's about bringing life. And evidently, the type of Tyra that brings life is a Tyra that 
the Rishon Baruch Hai and Ari and the Baal Shem Rabbi Nachman, it's somehow connected to Pirmi Yisrael And so now we can have, say the following thing, that the heir of Rav is the Tuma not just fighting against life, but it must also be a Tuma that's fighting against Pirmi Yisrael Because that's, that's the idea. If these five incarnations of Moshe is the antidote to the heir of Rav, is anti heir of Rav, then it must be the heir of Rav is not just anti-life, but it's anti the Torah that brings life, which is the Eitzchayim. That's why the result, the Sefer is called the Eitzchayim for a reason. Take a look at the page that you have in front of you. It's, two, it's two-sided. So for, first of all, I want to shkaych uh, to, uh, to Isaac Klein for not only for helping, Bechal, he always helps Bechal, specifically Sunday mornings, but also for the copy machine. So I appreciate that. So um, I personally am taking credit for the double-sided aspect of it, but the fact that you have copies is because of it. So if you take a look at the page that you have, so the side that says on top, it's uh, the, the, the copy of the actual Sefer, Akdamas Reinu Chaim Vital. Okay, this is from, this is a, just a page from, uh, it's, it happens to be, it's a Sefer by itself, really. It's an introduction that the that Chaim Vital wrote to his uh, Ksavim, to the Kisviari. And it's all about Pneum Satyr and, and the place of, of Pneum Satyr and sort of the, the history of Yiddish Gai And so what we're going to just see now is a few lines. And the Chaim Vital also draws this parallel between the Air of Rav and anti pneumia satire. Those two things. Because again, let's, right? We thought that's what's going on over here. The air of Rav is against Chaim, right? And Moshe Rabbeinu in those five incarnations is bringing Tyrus Chaim to the world, which is connected obviously to pneumia satire, Vaharaya. It's, we're talking about Rabshim and Nari, Valshem Rabbi Nachman. And the air of Rav is against that's the air of Rav is against pneumia satire. So take a look at Rabbi Vital. It's on the, left, on the right side, second paragraph. Hinin is bar makamacher hazeh. This is uh, it's it's it, it, it's the, it, it's a hakdama from Chavital to it, originally it was it was uh, written as hakdama to a larger sefer that's called Shar Hakdama. Uh, for the most part, it's usually printed as an introduction to Eitzchayim. That's uh, what we have. So any standard uh, edition of Eitzchayim will have this as an introduction to it. So we explained elsewhere. And this sums up everything we're talking about. The sin of Adam Rishon in choosing the Eitzadas Tevira over the Eitzachayim is Shaloi Bachar Les Asek Be Eitzachayim meant that he was not interested on his level. Again, we're talking about Adam Rishon. On his level, there was a decision made not to become preoccupied in that world that's called the Eitzachayim. She Chachmas Hakabala, which is Pnei Misatayim. So that's what the Rechav Yital is telling us, is that the sin of Adam and Chava could also be qualified and identified as a rejection of Pneum a rejection of those of the Torah that those five incarnations of Moshe are trying to bring to the world. We're not trying to explain this Nakuda though, what other Rishon, like what that meant. We're talking about other Rishon, like why, how, that's not the point, but just to show the parallel. And the Zeo Atzmai Avoin HaErevav. And said Rukhaim Vital, and that itself is a sin of the era. But appreciate that none of this would make any sense unless we had the five past weeks or whatever the case may be, right? Because Rukhaim Vital doesn't now explain Erevav. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? But this is what he's talking about. The Erevav is, is the same, it's the same reemergence of that sin. All the damage that was done by the sin of Adam and Chava in Ganeidin and after Ganeidin emerges as the, as the tomb of the Erevav. And the tomb of the Erevav is against life, the Eitzachayim. And Eitzachayim is. Is, and the, the, the Torah version, the Yitzchayim, is Chach Masapnim, is Chach Masakabal. V'za'atz of an Erev Rav, and this is the sin of the Erev Rav, Ha'aymer Lomaysha, who said to Maysha Rabbeinu by Har Sinai, Daber Ati Imanu V'nishma. They said to Maysha Rabbeinu, we, we can't tolerate Hashem's own voice, right? We want you to speak to us. What does it mean that they were asking for Maysha, you should speak to us? It means, Be'ezadaz Tavira. We want to hear a human, a Torah that speaks to the human being. To the human being, not a divine, esoteric, who knows what, right? We don't want to have a God speak to us. Pen Namas, maybe we'll die. You hear the irony of this, right? Is that Adrav, real life comes from connection to Pneum Satara. But the air of Rav, everything is corrupted and everything is mirrored and it's opposite. So they're now telling Moshe Ben, no, no, Kabbalah is going to, we're going to die if you learn Kabbalah, right? If you learn Pneum Satara, right? You, you, you die young and everything falls apart. No. You want to live? Then avoid the Yitzchak. You want to live, eat the Yitzhadas Tavira, which is exactly what the Nachash said also, right? The Nachash said, eat from this, you'll be like God. You'll live forever, everything will be fine, you'll be godlike. It's the exact opposite of the truth. That's what the, 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 the Erev Rav were telling Moshe Rabbeinu. We don't want to 
Here, God speaking to us, may, maybe we'll die. B'sis retire. Kisvar is a time. Kisas penetar. Like even some penetar make the mistake of thinking. Asher is manenu zeh. This was true at that time. Amitzim shem ra al chachmas emes chay oylam. We say lashon hara, just like the nachash did. On chachmas emes, on what is truly eternal life. Byrim shakol mi shemis asik ba. And they claim that anyone that involves themselves in the study of penis atar yomis bekitzur shonu chas v'shom dayon dayon chas v'shom. That's why we lost the first Luchas, which would have been the reemergence of the Yitzchayim. It would have been a tikkun of the Erev Rav. Everything would have been taken care of. But again, the Erev Rav convinced the Jewish people to follow the Chet Egel, which was later just a uh, going against the five, the, the, the Torah that the five incarnations of Moshe is trying to bring to the world. The Nidulam is Sitra Dei Tzadas and was given to us instead a Torah which is more modeled and more fitting with the world of the Yitzchayim, which is just Mishnah. And, and halacha. And again, this is why you need Maisha Benin to come back down five times to reintroduce the world to not just a Pneumis Torah, that's a nice idea, but a Pneumis Torah which, which enlivens Yiddishkeit. And, here, and here's the Nakuda. This is right, again, this is just more of introductory words before we get to the practical topic of specific today, which is that let's appreciate what's going on over here is that Pneumis Torah is not just a, what we're seeing now, again, I'm preaching to the choir, I get it, but it's important to, to realize, to appreciate what choir we're a part of, I guess. The, 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 Pneumis Torah is not just a nice thing, you know, to inspire people, or uh, when you're stuck, uh, you don't know what to do with Parnassus, so you go to Mokobul, because somehow, when you learn Kabbalah, you know about business, I don't know, and, and somehow things work, right? No. <laughs> That's not Pneumis Torah is. We all know this. Pneumis Torah turns a mitzvah from something that's dead into something that's alive. That's what Pneum Satar does, is all of a sudden the Luv and you're holding are vibrating with power, with, with it, it's real, it's real. It's a Torah Chaim, it's an Eitz Chaim, it's Mamish alive. And those Yidin that are connected to Pneum Satara, to that extent, they're more alive than others. This is the way it is. What does Pneum Satara mean? So again, I'm not... It doesn't mean to learn Kabbalah, but it means, like, like, like you see in those five incarnations, from Aisha all the way to Rabbi Nachman, it's a, ma- it's a matter of figuring the way of, 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 of connecting oneself to Tzadiki Emes and the Torah of Tzadiki Emes to be able to experience Yiddishkeit for what it is, which is something that's real. Something that's real. See, see what does it mean to be alive? See, see, life is an interesting thing. Life is something that is very easy to identify where, you know, when it's there, but very, very difficult to classify what it is. Everyone knows when someone's alive. Like, you, you could tell when someone's alive. But, so, you, you, so we know what it looks like. You know, we know the effects of being alive. And we know what you have to do to sustain life. Eat, drink, breathe, right? But what is life? What is that mitzias of of what happens when a neshama and a guf blend together and all of a sudden the person opens his eyes, like what is that? What is consciousness? That's a very difficult thing to be able to pinpoint. It's a sight. It really is a sight. So that, that's why, you know, the, the halach is that one is not allowed to give over opinions and you can't teach Maisa Merkava, right, to the public. It has to give, be given over Rebbe to Talmud. The Mishnah says like this, it's Rebbe to Talmud, one student at a time, and even then the Rebbe can't say everything. The Rebbe has to say Rashi Prakim, and the Talmud has to be a chacham umeivn midaita. The Talmud has to be wise enough to pick up on it on his own. That's now that's a very, see, that, that's a very funny thing. Because that means that it's set up to be misunderstood. No? I mean, I can't, the, the whole idea of Kabbalah is that the word Kabbalah means something that's passed down. It has to be in its purest form, untouched. It's, it's not human intellect. It's not human knowledge. It has to be in its pristine form. You can't come up with your own assumptions. That's what, that's what would poison Pneum Satara. That's what would uh, bring it to philosophy and so on. It has to remain pristine in its, in its pure divine form. So how would I do that without telling you, the, telling you, the, telling you what it is? What does it mean? That you have to be smart enough to fig- figure it out on your own? You can't figure it out on your own. That's what Kabbalah means, right? So what I mean. like, how, how, could I, how, could, how could a person figure out Kabbalah on their own? Kabbalah means to receive. The answer is what says... That Said Meisner Kava is, is an experience of Elokos. That's what Said is. Said is means to mean, a Yiddishkeit of Said is a Yiddishkeit that's alive. I know what it looks like, but I don't. I can't say what it is. I could tell if a, if a, if a Yid is living a life of Pinimius. I, I know what that looks like, 
But what is that exactly? What can, to, to define it, to put it in terms and say, so what, what is different about this person's Hanachas Tefillin and that person's Hanachas Tefillin? I see the difference, but I can't explain what the difference is. That's Tzai. That's an ex- the experience of Elikos. That was called Maisi Merkava. This is Shmuz on its own, what Maisi Merkava means, but Rapsalik writes that Maisi Merkava means the experience of being alive, of living, of, of all of a sudden the, the, the lights going on. And Yiddishkeit is now in a, now, now a Mitzias. It's not something that's absolutely real and tangible. What do you mean tangible? Tefillin are not tangible? What Tefillin are, they, they all of a sudden they become tangible and, and, and Torah takes on a deeper deeper meaning and Shabbos is different and Mikvah is different and, and the Machaveres are different and Stuck is different and Davin. Everything is, every, it's a new Mitzis. And you can tell, you can tell peripherally a person that's experiencing that Mitzis, but what is that Mitzis? It's by its very definition a secret. You have to be a chacham u You have to be able to be spiritually sensitive enough to figure it out on your own. What's being given to you is being given to you. But you have to be able to be sophisticated enough, and I say sophisticated not in an intellectual sense only, but in a spiritual sense, to be able to receive that and to really then experience life. And so this... So this is not an easy thing. This is not an easy thing. And, and Pia Satori is not, I mean, it's, it's, it's the fix, it's the answer, but it's something that, it's something that cannot be explained. And this is what these five neshamas, the five incarnations of Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, Shemin, Ari, Hashem, Rabbi Nachman, are there not to teach us necessarily things that other tzaddikim are not teaching us. This is, this is why whenever I mention this concept of the five Singularities, five single ones from the five yichidars. These five incarnations of Moshe, invariably, not that I get in trouble because like it really doesn't matter. But uh, <laughs> invariably, someone's going to ask uh, this tzaddik. He's not part of the five. This tzaddik is not part of the five. The whole sheer, the whole series is based on the Torah of the Vilna Gaon. And he told me the Gaon is not part of the five. Rashash is not part of the five. What's going on here? Yeah. So, okay, so the answer is it's not the Torah. Of these tzaddikim versus other tzaddikim, these are these are conduits for this revelation of sight. The mitzias of nishmas Moshe in the world allows every tzaddik in his own way to 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 to, to give expression to this secret in different ways. So the Goyin is talking about this sight, and the Rashash is talking about this sight. And the Chidush Arim is talking about this side, and Nabnezi and the Ragged Shaver, and Ruchaim and Brisker, and they're all talking about the secret of Yiddishkeit. What do you think Ruchaim Brisker was doing? What's Lomdus? What's the, the whole world of Yeshivas is involved in, in, in Sisri Torah. It's all involved in the side. Why was it made? That, what, they, what they're doing in Gemara is the same thing, right? All of a sudden, the Gemara is all, anyone that knows this, right? When you read a Gemara, Kapshutai, okay, it's very, very nice, whatever it is. But then when you, when Ruchaim, when you have, then Ruchaim like raises certain questions, like, oh, I didn't even think of that question. That's not a strong question. The Rechem gives the answer, and he says, the entire sugh, with all of its complexity, with all of its chaos, right? What is Toi Vavayu? Boils down to two dinim. And these two dinim is the bedrock and the, and the, and the foundation of the entire sugya. And every single region, and until now it was 15 different shitas, now it's basically two shitas. That's called side. You understand? That's called bringing unity to a chaotic sugya. That's, that's Primus Atara. The Rechem Risker was, was also part of this this process of the Masak and the Erevav, of bringing Tikkun, of bringing, of turning Torah into a Torah doesn't only have to with Kabbalah, but the point is, the Kayach through which every Tzaddik in his own way turns the Torah into, from something that's dead on paper into something that's truly alive, because again, let's understand, what happens to the body when it's not alive? It breaks apart into a billion pieces. So the nature of life is what? Or again, this is not the definition of life, but this is something that we find with things that are alive, is that they, they remain unified, right? That's what life does. When something's alive, it doesn't fall apart. If something falls apart, it's because it's slowly dying, or it's dead already, right? So anytime you have a tzaddik that takes the Torah and shows unity in it, whether it be in Nistar or in Nigla, that's, the, that's, that's called an avayda of these five tzaddiki emes of the yichidi adaris. So the, again, so it's not a matter of these tzaddikim and their Torah over other tzaddikim's Torah. But there's, an, there's something about the neshamas of these five tzaddikim that they are the vessel and the conduit through which this light of unity of Teres Chaim, Veitz Chaim, Lachzikim Ba, 
comes to the world and every tzaddik takes that energy and expresses it in their own particular lens. And it could be the Rashash in his way of making unity in Kisviari and organizing it and systemizing it, which is what Rashash did. Or it's Rechaim Brisker doing that to, you know, to, to, to Shas, it's a, to the Rambam. And so it's, 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 it's the same process, the same Avayda. It's Taras Chaim. And again, it's something that you, that you, you know it when you see it, but it's very hard to qualify what it is, nearly impossible, and that's, what, that's why it's a site. That, that's the definition of site. Okay, so now let's, with that being said, okay, with that being said that what it is is impossible to qualify, you have to just, it's a matter of, of, of connecting oneself to the five tzaddiki emes of Maisha, Rav Shemin, Ari, Baal Shem, Rabbi Nachman, and their tyras, and the tyras of tzaddikim that are in line with that inyan of trying to find unity and bringing things together. But with that being said, there are certain personality traits, there's certain avidus and certain midas that we can actually do in our own lives in a very practical sense. And these particular exercises are, are, are the telltale signs of being alive. In other words, there are certain, like I said, what life is, hard to qualify. But there are certain, there are certain uh, uh, um, what's the word? Um, there, there are certain uh, markers to indicate what something, when something is alive. Mm-hmm. And in Avodah Hashem, our Avodah very often is a big clown in Yiddishkeit, is that our Avodah very often is just to mimic something. If we, can, if, we could, if we could put all the pieces together in our lives to resemble as if we're alive, then all of a sudden you become alive. <laughs> that's because that's ultimately it's not in, we're not in charge of bringing life into, our, into ourselves, but we are in charge of arranging our lives in such a way where at least we could resemble and we're balach the bedrach we're sort of trying to live a life that's called alive and then the Rabbani Shalom will, will give us life so let's learn that that's what we're going to learn today some what are what how do we how do we figure this out that's going to be the approach right now for the next few minutes what is the mahalach of how to figure out what what certain personality qualities are avoid this in most are avoid this in in, uh, in the nefesh that are focused, that are, that are, that are simonim of being alive. <laughs> it's a funny thing to think about and to ask because like, what do you mean? Like everything we do is because we're alive. But more specifically, to, to, and, and when we can identify what those midas are, we'll get a little bit of a better sense of what life is. <laughs> right now it's too vague, you know, it's a site, so it's never gonna be 100%, but Okay, so let's, how do we begin to figure this sugi out? So it's all from the Vilna Gain, but we're going to go from it in a different way. Take a look at Maramaka number one, okay, on the other side of the page. Okay, so we're going to go through it uh, relatively quickly because it's not that hard. Again, this is more practical now. So uh, Pasuk number one is in Parshas, uh, in Parshas Veira. We know the famous Maisa that Hashem is planning on destroying Sadaim. Right? So he says, Machasanim Avram, how could I not tell Avram Avinu about what I'm going to do to destroy Sadaim? So the Pasik says, Hashem Amar Hashem said, Amachasanim Avram Asherani Aisa. How could I uh, take hold, conceal from Avram Avinu what I'm going to do? I cannot tell him. Why? Avram Avram Avinu is going to be this great, awesome, and powerful nation. And all the nations of the world will be blessed through Avram Avinu. Why? And, and that why? Because I know that he's going to command his children and his whole family to continue the Messiah. And he's going to guard the way of Hashem. To do Tzedakah and Mishpat. And that's going to allow, uh, Hashem says about himself, to, that I'm, that's what's going to allow me to bring all the brachas that I, that I spoke about, Avram Avinu, by Lachacha. It's going to allow me to bring it to him. Right, so summing it up, Hashem Yisbarach is saying that I can't not tell Avram Avinu about Zadayim. You know how great Avram Avinu is? He's so amazing, he's so gewaldic. He, he's going to pass on this, what's called Derech Hashem, to his children. Okay. Now let's appreciate what's going on over here. If you remember, this sugya of the Eir of Rav came to sort of, uh, you know, it had its few times of, of fixing, right? You remember the Mabel, the Darf Laga, and the final one was Zadayim. <coughs> Let's appreciate what's going on over here. Why is it that Hashem feels like he compelled, he has to tell Avram Avinu about Sadaim? And what's more, that once he tells him about Sadaim, what happens? 
that Avram Vinu begins to mamish Davin in a very strong way to save Sodom. Mm -hmm. That's uh, and it's ironic because Sodom is the opposite of everything Avram Vinu is about. Ches and so. Well, why is Avram Vinu so fixated on Sodom? And why is Avram, why is Rabbi Shalom feeling like I have to? I can't not tell Avram Vinu it's his any. Why why, why is Sodom his any? The answer is let's understand. Avram Vinu is davening not for Sodom. He's davening for the neshamas, mm -hmm. the heads of Nishmas Yisrael that was lost in Sodom at the time. And so let's appreciate this. Therefore, what Hashem Yisbarach is saying right now is therefore going to be the key to explain the a, a major aspect in understanding the tikkun of the Erev Rav and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, and bringing us to that experience of what's called life in Yiddishkeit. Because again, Avram Avinu feels responsible for Sadaim because Avram Avinu is the first Jew sees himself as the one ultimately responsible to bring Nishmas Yisrael to life and to bring these two parts together of the body which Avram Avinu begins to fix in his own life and the head that's lost in Sadaim, right? And when Avram Avinu is being told about the destruction of Sadaim and he's afraid that that's going to be the it, the it for, you know, finished uh, for those Nishamas, he goes to, he goes to battle <coughs> to, to save those Nishamas. So Avram Avinu is then told by the Rabbanish, uh, uh, the Rabbanish is saying about Avram Avinu, that I have to tell him about Sadaim because he is going to, and what, what, why? Because Avram Avinu is deeply connected to those neshamas that are lost in Sadaim. Why, how, and what way? Because Avram Avinu is going to keep the Derech Hashem. So if we can identify what this Derech Hashem is, that's going to be the key. Those are, go that's the Derech. That, those are going to be the Midas. Those are going to be the, the Inyanim, the, the, the markers of being alive. Do you follow this? That's what's going on over here. That's what Sadaim, again, that's what was going on. The destruction of Sadaim Chas Hashem might, might have meant the destruction of, uh, you know, these Neshamas that the Erev Rav, again, it was the fourth chance in Mitzrayim and it worked out, but this was the third chance that was the strike three of the year. So that was the concern. But Avram Avinu is the one that was upholding that Avoida of the Misak in the Erev Rav, and that's been described over here as Vishamur Der Hashem. So what is this Der Hashem? Okay, so take a look at Marmok in the Ritu. This is a Rambam. Okay, the Rambam in Hilchas Deis, Perak Aleph Halacha Vav. The Rambam is not talking about the Erev Rav, or at least uh, out in the open. Okay, but the Rambam says like this. It's a very famous idea from the Rambam. The Rambam is talking about a Derech Hachaim. He's talking about a way of life, how a Jew should live. Derech Hayeshara, says the Rambam, the proper path. Is he midas beinimus? Is the middle road, the middle road in the middle? Shabakol deya videya mikol adeya sheishel adam. Every midah, every personality trait, every philosophy that a person has always has extremes, right? You could go. He will give a few examples. He could go one way or the other. The adeya she rechayka mishteak tzavos richuk shava. And the best approach, the derech hayishara is that which is right in the center. That's equal distant from both extremes, <laughs> right in the middle. That's what you want, that's what you want to be. In a that's not any closer to one extreme than the other, right in the middle. This is why Chazal have told us, that a person should always tr train their personality and midas and so on. To what? The derech to be in the middle, to be in the, uh, to be in the middle. Kadei shei shalom agufa, they should be healthy, they should be alive, they should be able to be in the middle. What does that mean exactly? Keitza. So Ram gives a few very simple examples. Keitza. Lo yei bal chem anoyech lechois, v'loi kemeis sheinim argish. Person, there's two extremes with anger, right? A person, one guy has a serious temper and everything, you know, get, triggers him, right? And the other extreme is the guy doesn't care about anything. You could step on him, you could spit in his face, imamish could not care less. Says the Rambam, those are two extremes and neither are good. What should a person be? Hello, Baini. You'd be normal. What does Baini mean? It means lo yichas el davar gadol shoray lichas olav. Something that's that's uh, that's something worth worthy of being upset about. That really is a uh, is a problem. Then you get upset. Kadei shleyasa kiyosevay pamachas. Why are you getting upset that this shouldn't happen a second time? You know, no one should spit in your face. That that, that that's legitimate to be upset about that. To be upset about someone didn't give you shalom lechem. That's already not a reason to be upset. Again. Derech Mutza, normal middle path. Another example of a chain. Lo yisav el dvarm shaguf tzarech lem. Also, when it comes to taiva, again, so you could have all the extreme case of a person having a taiva for everything, or a guy doesn't have any taivas at all. Neither, neither are healthy. Rather, a person should have a taiva for those things that he needs. The afshalis was lost in things that he can't live without. 
Kenyan should never like the Pusik says Tzadik Eichel, the Savanashe, the Tzadik eats to satisfy his soul. So that which he needs to satisfy his soul, he enjoys and he wants. Another example. Layik bites Yada Biyaiser, don't be too stingy, right? To be you know, to hold back from giving. Leofazer of Maina, but not to just uh, you know, to give without end, without any reason, without any thought. To give everything away, that's also not good. Oh, nice and stuck. You give stuck based on what you can handle. Obviously, that depends on each person, but that you give whatever you can handle. And you loan money to the places that are appropriate. Mitzad, mitzad you, and mitzad the receiver. That, that's the derech abeinu. The derech zu, he derech hachachamim. That's the way of the hachamim. It says the Rambam, not only is this a good idea, this is actually a mitzvah. We're commanded to live in this way of the middle. This is, this is the proper and, uh, and just road. And this is, in fact, the definition of the mitzvah. According to the Ram, it's a chiddish. This is not for now so much, but the Ram defines v'alach t'bedrachav as not just be nice. V'alach t'bedrachav means to live in this middle path. Because Rabban Shalom is very nice, but he doesn't just give without end. Rabban Shalom understands that there's a cheshbon, right? So living, uh, living an appropriate life of in the middle, that's called v'alach t'bedrachav. Now says the Rama, Vihi Shalom and Avram Avinu Lubano. And this is the path that Avram Avinu showed for his children, Shnemar, Kiyadatif Lumana Sheritzava. That's the passage that we started with that the Rama quotes now, is that this is the reason why Hashem Yisparach felt compelled to tell Avram Avinu about his plan with Zudayim, because Avram Avinu is living this, la- this life of Derech Hashem. And that's, and that's the definition of this path, says the Rama, is the middle path. The middle path. So this is the definition of Derech Hashem, which is living in the middle. Okay, What does this have to do with the Sugya of the Erev of the So it's like this. Right underneath these Marukaimis, you see there's a little, um, I don't know what to call it, a little chart, whatever, yeah, of the, of the, of the ten spheres. Now again, I know there's 11, so that's, you know, it's not for now. <laughs> It's supposed to be ten, but we do know there is an idea that the Rabbanu Shloilam, every living organism, every living Jew, is compro- is there is there is a certain there is a certain blueprint of what life looks like. If you needed to, if you needed to, you know, to 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 quantify it and to and to and to give a, a an algorithm for it, there's the periodic table of existence in Ruchnius. For something to truly be alive. It, ha- it has to contain these ten spheres, okay? Three intellectual, and the rest emotional, and so on. What they mean is not for now, but as you'll see, but here's the nakuda. Here's the nakuda for us, is that the way the ten spheres are are always uh, written up and sort of described in, in chart-like form, is that it's in three lines. There's the right extreme, the left extreme, and the line in the middle. The, the right is always related to chesed. So all the so the three spheres again. I'm not explaining this right now, but the three spheres that you see on the right side, right number two, five, and eight. Let's say chachma, chesed, and netzach. Those are all chesed oriented. Okay. The three spheres on the on the left side, bina, gvur, and Haid, are all din and gvura oriented. Okay. Those are the two extremes. In the Vilna Gain, the rise of the Vilna Gain, and here's the Nakud over here. In the rise of the Vilna Gain, the Midas that are mostly associated with life itself, with what it means to be alive, is that which is in the middle. Because the middle, let's understand, the middle it always means stability. Always means stability. Anytime that there's an extreme, extreme always is maybe exciting, but it's always not sustainable. Extremes are never sustainable, right? Not only are they not sustainable, but they usually fall into unhealthy places. Mm-hmm. It's always like that. The middle is always what's sustainable, and the middle is always what allows something to remain healthy and ultimately alive. Like I said a moment ago, what's the simon of life? One of the great simonim of life is things being unified, being held together, right? When, when again, when a person passes away or an animal dies, what mm-hmm. happens? The, the, it falls into a billion pieces, right? Things begin to move into extremes. What unifies everything, the center line, that's the simon of life. That's the simon of life. So let's, let's explain the oimek of what we just learned from the Rambam. Again, the Rambam told us is that the derech, of, the derech Hashem that Avram Avinu undertook upon himself 
which gives him the right to know what's going on in Sadaim, is going in the middle, is being in the middle. So in other words, what's therefore happening, what we're, what we're, what we're learning about, in what, what we're seeing in the Rambam and so on, is this Nakuda, and based on Vilna Gain, is that if we want to define what Midas we should work on that allows us entrance into that world that's called being alive, it's specifically going to be the Midas that are related to the spheres that are in the middle. The middle, the Derech Hashem, the middle path, the path of life, the path of sustainability, the path that unifies separate things, the path of the Yitzchayim. Those are the Midas that are going to be in the middle, and that, those are the Midas to work on in order to, in order to ultimately, ultimately become alive and so on. That's, uh, that's the Avayda of yours. Follow so far? That's what's going on over here. That's the Mahalach. That's the Mahalach. So now, to say, therefore, ultimately, what we're now going to do, Mamish, for another few minutes, because we don't have time right now, to be Marach in this a little bit more, but we're going to, yeah, what's going on over there? Uh, what we're going to, okay. So what we're going to see for the next few minutes is really just to introduce us to one particular Nakuda of, of this Avaita of being in the middle. Now, let, let me explain. <laughs> In Marmokka number three, you have a paragraph from the Leshem. Okay, this is from one of his sermons from Sefer Day. <clears throat> and the Leshem is telling us a, a general approach of, of something that's going to be a necessary component in every particular aspect of these middle midas, of these middle spheres. Again, am I, am I clear? do you understand what I'm saying over here? This, this is an Akuda. Again, we've We've now identified, again, this, to make it as clear as possible, we've identified that the definition, the, the simon of life is unification, is bringing opposites together. And that's sustainable. That's ultimately what uh, keep things, keep things, keeps things uh, moving and alive. So now, in terms of the midas, in terms of the spheres, those spheres which are, generally speaking, identified as the middle line, those are going to be the midas that are under attack by the air of Rav. That's going to be the Kuda. Each one of them, whatever Kesser means, whatever Das means, whatever Teferis means, whatever Yisait means, whatever Malchus means, these are the Midas that are under attack by the Erev Rav. And our Avoida is to Mechazek every single one of those Midas. And as we're going to see, Bez Hashem, the, these, what these Midas mean, what these Midas mean and how they're under attack is very much what's going on in Gullus America, as we've been talking about. And that's our Avoida, is to have a healthy diet of what? Of, of, of Pnimis Atoria, <coughs> Pnimis Tegi Yiddishkeit, with focus on these particular midas of the middle, okay? And when you put that together, that's the ingredient of life. That's the ingredient of life. These midas in place, in a healthy way, are all the markers of, of being alive. And then you actually are engaged in whatever level of Pnimis Atoria you are, on that, that's, that's fitting for you in terms of connecting to those five incarnations of Maishar Benu. That's Mama Shalom. That's not much alive. So let's let's begin let's begin with the with the uh, with this klal from the from the leshem, and this leshem is giving us again a klal in terms of a general uh, a general vision of these mi- particular mi- uh, middle midas, and in particular the first one. We'll see. Take a look at the leshem. Leshem writes like this: Kishtatfus rachemim imdina. Whenever you're talking about trying to bring together opposites, chesed, right, rachemim and din, right, the the, the right extreme. With the left extreme, Ashem Beisk Savos, which are these two opposite ends, Umenad them zelazeh, and they fight against each other. Kinei Efsher Bemes Eliyadei Kav Hemtzoy Hamachri Ekenayda. The only way to do that is to have a middle line in the middle, something, <coughs> some, some Derech Habeli, the Derech Hashem of Avram Avinu, that he is that that Avram Avinu takes upon himself to ultimately be Masaki in the air of Rav. Which were being destroyed in Sodom, that's the Derech Hashem, that's the middle path. But in order for this union to come together, the, this middle path has to be really qualified and defined. And you have to really figure out what these Midas are that embody this middle line to allow yourself to bring things together and to experience life. That's, that's, that's what you have to do. Now says the lesson in the amazing line, V'ikr hasiba, 
And the main seed, but you want to know the, the fund, most fundamental media that one has to have in order to even begin this avoida of being masak in the middle line of the spheres, again, thus enabling you to embody life and to masak in the air of in your life, who has seder bahadraga, is patience. Patience. And the ability to wait and to allow things to unfold piece by piece. <laughs> To allow things to, to be put together slowly but surely and not to need quick, 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 to be able to have patience. That says the lesson is an amazing thing. That is the most important quality of the middle. Because when it, let's understand, whenever you have two opposites, for them to be unified, it's going to take time for every prat of this extreme and that extreme to meld with each other. It's not a quick solution. And that's the, that's the definition of life. In a certain sense, not, I can't say the definition, but that's a very major marker to indicate where life exists is where there's patience. Life takes time. It takes time to develop. It takes nine months in the, in the womb. It, it takes time for the details, for the body and soul to become unified. It's not something that happens overnight. It's something that has to have time to bake. And so this is one of the most important qualities, the Messina Skadal, with patience. And then all the difficulties in each extreme become softened and become worked through with time as each extreme melts with the other through Messinas, through Messinas. And they ultimately will, will become one through that single line. But the process of here, this is the Nikudah here, the process of unifying all extremes and really coming in coming in contact with what with 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 the simonim of life and allowing life to develop in a spirit in a physical and a spiritual sense demands messinas yeah. demands patience demands patience now this therefore goes without saying is a huge a huge Indian that's yeah. under attack the ekfus of the mishich of not allowing the patience to be you could blame it on all you want. The person can blame it on technology. You could blame it on on uh, the Gashmias. You could blame it on who knows what. You, you, you could blame it on all sorts of things. And those might be all ways in which impatience is surfacing. But the root of what impatience, why is there such impatience in the world, is because of the Tomb of Erva. That's where it's coming from. How does that surface? How does this Yetzirah of impatience make itself uh, noticeable. So it's through technology and it's through Gashmias and it's through everything just quick and all that's, and it's all true. But the ultimate Nikuda, uh, wh why is the Air of Rav Golis so obsessed with not allowing a person to have any time to think and to have any patience at all? And whatever you want to have, you have it automatically. And we always think of that as a good thing, but it's really counterproductive sometimes because in order, because again, what the Erev Rav does not want, what this Golas does not want us to be able to experience is what? Is, is, a, is a Yiddishkeit of life. And the Yiddishkeit of life comes with being able to connect ourselves to the middle, which unifies extremes. And as Aleshem is telling us, the unification of extremes takes time. It takes time. This is why the number one Mida of that which is in the middle is Keser, right? The word keser, let's, let's, now let's explain just for a few minutes. If, by the way, if anyone has to leave, it's totally fine. Not, just for a few more minutes, so wanna, I want to get started a little bit over here. The word keser, the first mida of the middle, <clears throat> midas, that's again identified now more clearly with life itself and, and the markers of life. The word keser <laughs> means crown, and it's always associated with rotsen, with desire. What do you want? What do you want? Now, now that's an interesting thing. Because the word keser in Tanakh, also the word kater means to wait. To, means to wait. So the word, the first mida of the middle madregas, which is keser, means mesinas. It means to wait. Because in a certain level, that's the greatest expression of what you want, is that it takes time to clarify what you want. You don't, you don't know what you want. We don't know what we want. You could, if you're told what you want, okay, that's not what you want. What do you want? That takes time. It takes time to develop an inner identity, an inner sense of, this is what I want. And, and, and that Indian of Messinas, that Indian of Messinas is the greatest indicator of life. Because let, let's, let's understand this. Life means, 
Another great indication of life, that's what, that's what Kesser is about. A great indication of life is, is choice. It's choice. How do I know that something's alive? Because it moves, right? Like, you know, if, you, if someone, how do you know someone's alive? So you see Britain, there's movement, right? Movement is always an indication of life. Movement on a spiritual level means choice. I want this and I'm going to go get it. That's what choice, that's, that's, that's what Bechir is, to make that choice, to make that choice. And choice comes with, choice comes with, it has to come with patience. It has to come with patience because in order to choose something, there has to be a discerning, there has to be an understanding, what am I choosing, why am I choosing it? And that, that quality of, of Messinos is absolutely vital and absolutely necessary to even begin this avoid of Shaivu. I know it's already the last week, Shai, you know, but like to, to even begin this avoida of, of, of experiencing a, 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 a Yiddishkeit that's alive, the most number one agreement, that's what we're learning today. And Bez Hashem, next week and, and so on, we'll, we'll get more into the details of these middle meters. But that's the, the point of right now. The point of right now is the introduction into this avoida of life is what? Is Messinas. Is not to expect things quickly. And Adarabah, when things come with time, then they're more real, and they're more alive, they're more alive. And this is, again, this is why, this is, more, again, we'll, 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 see, we'll speak more about Kesser, I guess, next time, but, but this inning of Messinus is, is a very, very important point. And by the way, it's also important in Pinyin Satar, because Pinyin Satar is not something that comes easily in terms of understanding it and appreciating it and, and experiencing it. It comes with Messinus. But this thing of patience is extremely, extremely important in order to allow extremes to melt. A person that's impatient in Gashmis and in Ruchnius is not go- allowing themselves to experience life. Not allowing themselves to experience life. And any choice that they make is reactive. It's not coming from within the person himself. Do you understand this? A true choice and true movement and, tr- and life means it has to be motivated from within you. From within you, that's a symptom of being alive. When a, when 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 a, a, when you plug in a lamp and the lamp the lamp is lit up, the lamp is not alive. How do I know? You take it out of the plug, unplug it. It's not. It doesn't have its own chias. The simon of being alive. Life means that it has its own battery pack. It has its own its its own system. And to have your own system means that you have to make your own choices and decide for yourself what you want. And that takes time to develop. It takes time to develop that quality. If a person is, if it's always just reactive, 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 then there's no time for you to be active. You're always reactive. And even when you're doing something, you're doing something just as a reaction too. But the idea of of actually being proactive, that's a sign of being alive. That's why Moshe Rabbeinu takes us out of gullus, of slavery. Slavery means always being reactive. What do I do? I don't know, whatever my master says. What do you want to do? That's a sign of being alive, when you can finally say, this is what I want to do. How do you know what you want to do? That takes time. That takes time. It takes messiness. So the word, that's, that's the, the, the first meaning that we're talking about of keser. Keser means rutzen. Keser means choice. Keser means decisions. It means saying, this is what I want. And the way to develop that is kater, is with patience and, and, and waiting. And listening, and waiting, and learning, and then developing within yourself what is it that you want, and then to be able to express that. But that, that that's, that's the beginning of this avoid of, of coming in contact. And this is all part of Shmir Sabris. It's all part of this avoid Because again, your sight, right? Your sight is in the middle. Your sight is, in the, is one of those meters in the middle. But Bez Hashem, that's where we're going to go to. And that's why it's a longer approach of working on these particular meters. But if we can, it's a, it's a much more holistic approach at the same time. So that's avoid the exercise number one. Patience, patience. When you go to grocery shopping or something, Daf can go the longer line today.